everyone and welcome to Extreme Servolution. My name is Dave Jamison and I'm the lead pastor of Church in the Valley and director of Acts of Kindness in Langley, British Columbia, Canada. I've had the privilege of pastoring this amazing congregation now and serving as director of Acts of Kindness for the last 20 years. But if there's one thing that we've learned is that Jesus is the true CEO of Church in the Valley and Acts of Kindness. And he's been leading us on a journey to discover how to serve people in our community and to reach them for the kingdom of God. Well, as you look at the world around us right now, I'm sure you know that the world is experiencing a global revolution. Why, for the first time in human history, there's an unprecedented desire for global, political, economic, and social change. When it's all said and done, our world is experiencing a global community crisis right now, isn't it? And I believe that it's time for a wake-up call. I believe that it's time for a daring vision for Christ followers in our world today. In fact, I believe that what the world needs today, what the church needs today, what you and I need today is not to experience a revolution, but rather a servolution. You might say, what is a servolution? Well, according to Dino Rizzo in his book entitled Servolution, he said a servolution is a significant change in the course of human history sparked by simple acts of kindness. In other words, a servolution is a complete and radical change of a person's life caused by simple acts of kindness that they do for the glory of God. A servolution, you could say, is God's kingdom in heaven coming down to this earth. Why, a servolution is a church revolution through serving. It's not a program. It's not an event. It's the divine culture of God birthed inside his church. It is a culture of sacrifice and service, my friend, that can and will change the entire world. You see, servolution is an action word. It's actually a combination of the words revolution and service. And when you bring them together into a brand new word, you discover that it has a compounding effect for the kingdom of God in this world. When I think about scripture, for example, I think of the story of Dorcas in the book of Acts. Dorcas was involved in sharing community programming to those around her who were in need. She served food and clothing to people. But I wonder, what would Dorcas do if she were alive today? How would Dorcas serve people today? Would she innovate and expand her ministries to the community based on the time in which she lives? I believe that she would do exactly that. In fact, I believe that she would want to fulfill the great kindness text of the Bible where Jesus said, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. One of my favorite authors said it this way, Christ's method alone will bring true success in reaching the people. The Savior mingled with men as one who desired their good. He showed his sympathy for them, ministered to their needs, and won their confidence, and then he bade them follow me. You see, as a pastor, I believe that it's only Christ's method alone that's going to give us true and lasting success in reaching the people. Why, if we would humble ourselves before God and be kind and courteous and tender-hearted and pitiful, there would be a hundred conversions to the truth where now there is only one. 
Can you imagine what would happen in our world if church members would begin to practice an extreme servolution and if they would do an act of kindness for someone every single day? Why, it would change us, it would change our local community, it would change our church, and it would certainly change the entire world. Well, you might ask me, why do we serve? Well, there are at least several simple, important reasons that we would serve. First of all, we serve because Jesus did, and Jesus is the greatest example of serving. Secondly, we serve because Jesus calls us to follow his example. As Christians, we follow Christ. And so Jesus was a servant, and so he calls us to be a servant as well. Thirdly, we serve because service is a tangible expression of the love of God. If there's one thing that people want to experience today, it is the love of God. They don't want people to be telling them about the love of God. They want to see it with flesh on it, with skin on it, so to speak. Fourthly, we serve because service breaks down barriers and opens hearts. Let me tell you a couple of stories. You know, when I first came to this congregation, one of the prerequisites for being pastor was that you had to golf. And so I golfed with our church family. And sometimes we would even golf for Jesus. I would golf with one other member of our church and we'd join two other men uh, in the community that we didn't know and we'd golf together as a foursome and have a great day together. But I would always be nervous about getting to the second tee because invariably one of the other men would ask me, Dave, what do you do? And as a pastor, I hated that question because I knew that when I answered it, it was going to ruin their day on the golf course because now they probably couldn't be themselves. And so I would answer it truthfully and I'd say, I'm a pastor. And the very next question that would inevitably come was, what church do you pastor? And I said, well, I pastor the church in Aldergrove. And they would say, you mean to say you pastor that church that does acts of kindness ministries to the community? I know about your church. Why, if I were to join a church, I would join a church just like that. Then I had the privilege of speaking to a nurse who was in the OR room from day to day. And she wasn't a member of our church then, but she is now. And she came and told me, she said, you wouldn't believe what I was listening to today. I was in the OR and the two surgeons were operating on someone and the whole time they were talking about your church, the church that's involved in acts of kindness in the community. And they were saying, wow, isn't it great? that a church serves its community in that way. You see, my friend, we don't know how or where it'll make an impact, but service breaks down barriers and opens hearts. And finally, we serve because service changes our church. It changes our local community and it changes our world. You see, the goal of servolution, my friend, is to demonstrate the love of Jesus, not just to proclaim it. Long gone are the days of proclamation. Long gone are the days when we simply tell people about God. People are longing to see God. They're longing to experience God. They want to know that he's real. And when we demonstrate the love of Jesus through acts of kindness, then they're able to see Jesus is alive and that his love can and will make a difference in our world. Well, the next question that we want to answer today is how do we serve? And I'd like to share with you six incredible innovative principles from the Word of God that make up a servolution strategy. Servolution strategy number one. Servolution is about serving with no strings attached. And my friend, this is one of the greatest principles of Christianity. The foundation of the Christian faith is that we are saved by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
when it's all said and done, God's love is extended to everyone. In fact, Jesus said it this way in John 13 and verse 34. He said, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. Well, let me ask you, how has God loved us? How has God demonstrated his love to you and me? Well, I believe that we can answer that question by going to the most well-known verse in the entire Bible, a verse that you've heard millions of times, if I can say it that way. John chapter 3 and verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Well, I'd like you to come with me for a moment back to the very first time that those words left the lips of the Savior, Jesus. It was one evening, late at night, and Jesus was about to have a conversation with a Pharisee by the name of Nicodemus. And Nicodemus was expecting Jesus to share a servolution strategy. But what Jesus shared with him was totally different than what he had expected. You see, Jesus shocked Nicodemus with that John 3.16 statement. In fact, Jesus torpedoed his theology right out of the water. Let me explain why. Jesus said, For God so loved the world... Well, Nicodemus said, no, 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 wait a minute, for God so loved the Jewish nation. You see, for Pharisees like Nicodemus, the kingdom of God was seen as a reward intended for the benefit of God's people, the Jewish nation, not as a gift to the entire world. But Jesus was opening up his mind. Jesus was wanting to bring about a paradigm shift inside the life of Nicodemus. He was wanting to bring about a culture shift that took place in Nicodemus and even in you and I today because the truth is, Jesus said, for God so loved the world. In other words, God loves everyone, my friend. And Jesus continued. And he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten, what? Jesus said, son. And this just shocked Nicodemus to the nth degree because he could not fathom that God had a son in his own monotheistic religious beliefs. That was not possible. But Jesus was showing him that he needed to open his mind to the possibilities of a divine God who knows everything and is able to show us how to reach people for him. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever... And once again, this disturbed Nicodemus because what Jesus was actually saying was that God loves the prostitute on the street just as much as he loves the parishioner in the pew or the pastor in the pulpit. God loves people whether they go to church or not. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God gave Jesus as a gift, a free gift to anyone on planet earth, whosoever accepts that gift can be saved in God's kingdom. You see, my friend, Jesus came to minister to all people all over the world. In fact, he never left a city in the same condition as it was when he arrived. 
So our congregation wanted to change the city that we lived in. We wanted to impact our community for Christ. So we renamed our Adventist community services to AOK Acts of Kindness and developed 12 new ministries to serve people in our community. Here they are, a whole list of 12, the Breakfast Club, Extreme Home Repair, Cars for Moms, Single Moms Oil Change, Kingdom Assignment, and more. But today I would like to share with you a glimpse of our AOK Cars for Moms ministry. What we do is ask and invite people in our community to donate their quality pre-owned vehicles to acts of kindness. And then we have a team of volunteers who repair those vehicles and who restore them. And then we simply gift them to single moms and struggling families in our community. One of the vehicles that we gave away was given to a Muslim lady by the name of Tayaba. And she and her two girls were blessed simply with a gift that was given with no strings attached. I came to Canada last year as a family. I landed in Burnaby. After some time, my husband left me. As a human being, this is the hardest time because when you see your children in pain, uh, that's the hardest time for the mother. But when I see my girls in front of me, my inspiration gets higher that I have to do it for my girls. Tabitha, that is your new vehicle. This is your new surprise, which I was telling you about. Mommy, yes. that kind of car I was wishing for. <laughs> wishing for, look yeah. at that. We will present you with the keys. Thank you so much. And the van is now yours. Thanks. On oh, isn't it great? <laughs> it's so nice. I really want to thank this program, Act of Kindness, and the car which I have got today means a much, means so much to me that no matter how many cars I get in my life and my daughters get, I'm telling you, I think you've seen the smiles and excitement on my daughter's face. I think the excitement they have today is much more will be much more than the excitement even their mom gets a Mercedes in future. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thanks for everything. Thank you very much. Okay. You see, whether Tayaba and her girls ever go to a Seventh-day Adventist church or not is not the point. But she and her girls have become great friends of our church. In fact, she enrolled her children in one of our schools. But the reality is that true service is a gift without strings attached. And when we deliver it humbly, it always makes a heavenly impact. Well, servolution strategy number two is that servolution is about serving with extreme generosity. You see, many people may look at Jesus and say he was a revolutionary. I look at Jesus and I say, no, Jesus was a servolutionary. And I base that on Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28, where Jesus himself said, The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, whenever someone gives a ransom for someone, it's a very high price, isn't it? 
But the truth is that Jesus paid the highest ransom price ever paid on planet Earth when he gave his life for you and me. In fact, there was a great exchange that took place. Ridiculous generosity, you call it, is exactly what we've received from God because Jesus is the perfect example of extreme giving. Let me explain. You see, when Jesus came and gave his life for you and me, my friend, we got Jesus, forgiveness, abundant life now, and eternal life in God's kingdom when Jesus comes again. But what did he get in return? He got us. And all I can say is enough said. We were the ones who benefited the most from that ridiculous extreme generosity. But my friend, the incredible reality is that God doesn't look at it that way. To God, you and I are more valuable than anything else on planet Earth. When it's all said and done, people are the only ones who are going to leave planet Earth and go to heaven. You see, God loves everyone. And if you and I happen to miss out on heaven, it is going to tear a piece out of the heart of God. And so, if we are truly going to be followers of God, followers of Jesus, then everything about our Christianity should also be about serving and loving and giving to other people as well with extreme generosity. Way back in 2014, we began another Acts of Kindness ministry called Extreme Home Repair. One evening, I was watching a television program in America called Extreme Home Makeover. And when I went in the office the next day, my associate pastor said, did you see that program last night? And I said, yeah, I did. And we both looked at each other and said, we can do that. We have people in our congregation who are involved in the construction trade. They love hammers and saws and, and power tools. And why don't we get them to volunteer and let's make a difference in the life of a family in need, a family that's in crisis in our community. And so we began to formulate a team and to get things in place to do an extreme home repair. And over the years, as we've been doing this now for about 20 years, sometimes we have about 300 volunteers, about 150 from the church and 150 people from the community. We have grown our business contact list to 120 businesses that sponsor the extreme home repair, and sometimes we have uh, placed around $250,000 worth of product and labor into transforming the home of a family in need. And you might say, well, where do you get all the money for that? Well, who cares about the money? Scripture says that our God owns all the cattle on a thousand hills that all the silver and the gold belong to him. And so we've gone out there and we've approached businesses in our community and we've asked them if they want to help with extreme home repair. And they want to be involved. People in the community have a kind heart and they want to make a difference as well. And so some companies donate the carpet, others donate the windows and the doors, some the roofing materials, others the lumber, and even some department stores donate the appliances. Extreme home repair has made an incredible difference in our community. Yeah, it's a lot worse than we thought it was going to be. It's pretty ugly. I 
Because I'm so happy doing this. Yeah. One challenge after another, but we got our goal. I've been involved with extreme home repair since 2010. And I guess I'd say the most compelling thing that I could say about extreme home repair is the way that it truly impacts people's lives. We do these projects with no strings attached. It's just a gift of grace. You see, Alter Grove Church is more than just a church. It's our focused mission to reach out to God's hurting people. An Alder Grove family has been given a new lease on life. Their home was in desperate need of repair. So a few friends and a whole lot of strangers pitched in to build a new one. As the CBC's Dana Kelly reports for this family tonight, there's no place like home. Move that bus! It's a scene straight out of a home renovation show, but this isn't reality TV. Welcome home. Oh my goodness! From the fresh paint oh to the brand new kitchen, gosh. even the photos on the wall, Kathy Dunn's home has been completely transformed. Okay, dishwasher. The single mother of two has been you living in a damp, mold-infested home in Aldergrove for years. Yeah. The roof leaked, but the only solution Dunn could afford was to pile up the furniture, remove the rain-soaked carpets, and tape up the holes in the bathroom. It's not the house I left them in all. I had just, um, I'd been hoping for a roof, and I've got so much more, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> One morning I came to pick up Jamie, and she was on the roof putting, fixing the bricks, holding the tarp down in the pouring rain, and that's when I was like, oh, you know what, I went home and I got online, and I emailed the AOK Alder Grove Church. The Extreme Home Repair Project has been helping families in need for 10 years now, bringing together hundreds of volunteers and thousands of dollars in donations. Organizers say Dunn is a shining example of a woman deserving of a fresh start. So we felt she really needs this. She's a single mom. She's, she could lose her home. We felt we can make a difference here. I want to say thank you, but it seems so pathetic, you know, compared to, you know, what, what's been done here and, and what they've done for us. And uh, I'm just so grateful. It took 15 days and a whole lot of love to pull off this renovation. So for Kathy Dunn, home is certainly where her heart is. Dana Kelly, CBC News. I've been involved with uh, extreme home repair since the beginning. I really have to say that over the years we could have never seen what the humble beginnings back in 2004 would manifest into now. When I see what the difference it's made in our community and in the different families' lives is what drives us each year. And I know that uh, without a doubt that God will continue to bless this program well into the future. Essentially, our life was going down the tubes before they came. And I don't think we could have came out of it without them. The church brought us together, gave us a new beginning. One random act of kindness can and will change the world. Love, it all boils down to that simple word, love. And it all came from acts of kindness.
You see, our God is one who extravagantly gives, and he delights when his beloved embrace a heart of radical generosity as well. When all is said and done, my friend, we are nothing, and he is everything. And he became nothing and served us as though we were something. He laid down his life for our nothing. My friend, how much more should we, being nothing, serve those he considers to be something worth everything? If you'd like to receive a free transcript of these Extreme Servolution presentations, I invite you to send an email to hello at churchinthevalley.ca and we'd be happy to send you a free copy. Also, if you would like to purchase any of our AOK resources, including one of five manuals that we've written in regarding how to conduct a single mom's oil change, how to conduct a Cars for Moms ministry or an extreme home repair ministry, etc., then all you have to do to get one of these presentations is to simply uh, go to www.actsofkindness.ca or you can call us in Canada at 604-514-8335. Or if you'd like, you can go to adventsource.org, type into the search engine, Acts of Kindness, and you'll be able to find the materials there on their website. Finally, if you'd like, you could also call Advent Source at 402 486 8800 and a ministry consultant will help get these materials into your hands. Well, why don't we close this presentation by having a word of prayer together. Father God, we thank you for the love of Jesus in our lives. We thank you for the great kindness that he has shared with each one of us, giving himself to us with no strings attached and with extreme generosity. We pray that every single viewer today will be moved by what Jesus has done for us and that we might follow his example and share his great love with others as well through acts of kindness and an extreme servolution. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.